Hello, travel biz owner. Welcome to my corner of the travel industry, the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Podcast. If you're ready to have fun, be inspired, get clarity, and take action in your travel business, then you're in the right place. Let's jump in. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. It is, I think to my calculations, this is the second Friday in November, November 10th. Um, And I just wanted to quickly remind you about the Plan Your Year session. It is happening next Thursday and Friday, November 16th and 17th from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. If you are sick of going into the new year without a plan, I want to help you go into 2024 with the clarity and confidence that you need for your marketing plan to meet the sales goals that you have in order to meet the revenue goals and live the life that you are really wanting to achieve through your business. So let's get on that. You can go ahead, register at the show description. There's going to be a link there. I would love to see you there. You're not only going to get four hours, so two hours each day with me and with your peer community, you're going to get a digital workbook to download. And I have even created that workbook as a printed workbook. If you would like to grab that, off of Amazon to start planning out your year as well as the content to get you to the goals for next year. So let's go ahead and dive in to uh, what shouldn't you be posting on your social media? I know we talk a lot about the opposite, the reverse, like what should you be posting on social media? And um, I feel like there's some people that are normal offenders. I'm not trying to call anybody out. I just want to guide you a little bit better so that you know um, that you shouldn't be putting those things on social media. So first things first, prices. Don't go on your social media posts. Um, I'm trying to think like if you're looking at more high-end products or any other products for that matter, Do you see that they're posting prices for things on social media? Like I think of some of my like candles or I think of, you know, some of the products that I really love or the programs that I really love. And there's not anything that says like for $9.99, like that's like infomercial. That's like cheap TV infomercial stuff. Um... Prices are for when you're like in an active sales conversation with somebody. They're not for enticing somebody to come in through the door unless, you know, you're doing like a Black Friday type of promo or you've got like some sort of storefront or special thing that like you've really got to sell and got to get rid of. But even then, I'm a little like, "Mm." but prices should not be on your social media. Um, The next thing is supplier forward promotion should not be on your social media. So, and I know that a lot of this is is prevalent and like I irk when I see there's a shudder that happens when I see some people's social media and I'm like, why are you promoting them? Like they have their own marketing teams to promote them. Like you don't have to promote this cruise line or this tour company or this DMC, like they have, like that's what their marketing teams are for. Your social media is to promote you and what you can do. Now, I'm also, I also want to be cognizant of the legalities in marketing and you can refer back to Tom Carpenter's session from the 2022 prep for Wave Week on marketing day and legalities in marketing, that if you're putting together kind of like an FIT trip to sell to people, you do have to be transparent about who the tour operators are, but that, and like who your suppliers are, but that does not have to be a focal point on your social media. Your social media is to be like, hey, look what I can do. That makes me think of mad TV. (laughs) Look what I can do. And get them to be like, oh, I want to know more about this thing. And that's where you put more of the details out. Like, you know, I'm thinking of even like a car dealership. That's the, they have prices on there because they want to like immediately sell. Like when you're at a car dealership, it's not usually because you're thinking about buying a car. Whereas social media, 
like I've mentioned in a couple episodes in the past, like social media is not somewhere where people are like, I'm going to buy some stuff on social media. I'm going to buy me a trip. I'm going to buy me a new pen. I'm going to buy me a new outfit. Like people don't go on social media thinking that. People go on social media because they want to relax, because they want to have fun, because they're trying to see what everybody's up to in their network, whether that's personal network or professional network. It's not immediately to be bombarded with sales and buying of things. Now, sometimes, yeah, you can convert people on social media, but social media really is for that relationship and nurturing that relationship and nurturing that relationship with you as the business owner, which means you are not promoting supplier things on your social media. Also, what you may not expect me to say is your social media should not be perfection. I know a lot of people might be like, (gasps) like gasping at me. I, I mean, a beautiful feed is nice to see, but it's not necessary to see. And I think a lot of people I, I don't think it's an important thing. So when you're like, oh my gosh, but it needs to look a certain way. Da, 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 I want you to focus more on these types of things where you don't put your prices, you don't put supplier forward. But if you're not following a cadence of like carousel, real quote, post picture, carousel, real, like that's okay. That's okay. It doesn't have to be like following a certain cadence. Um, just be cognizant of, and there's so much to be cognizant when we're thinking about marketing, not just social media, like where are they at in their buying stage? Who are you serving? What are their needs? What's at the forefront right now? That having like a perfectly curated feed is not one of them either. And, And I say that because I also do not want a hodgepodge on your feed as well. Meaning that, I also need, or your feed, so, okay, your feed cannot be a hodgepodge, meaning this this post can't be red, then the next one green, then the next one yellow, then the next one blue, if your colors aren't even those colors, your brand colors. So when we're thinking of cohesiveness, no, you don't need to have a pretty feed, but it needs to be cohesive with your brand. So if your brand colors are... Hold on, I'm, I'm making some brand colors here with my mouse pad. If your brands are purple, white, and pink, then any, uh, like your posts need to be following that color scheme of purple, white, and pink. Maybe it is rose gold and gray. Um, maybe it is orange and green. <laughs> like there's so many different color combinations, but when you don't, when you're not following a, a brand, so aka you have a hodgepodge brand, people are going to be confused. They're going to be like, I don't know if this is their post. I don't know if they're doing something different. This is also very similar to your brand fonts. Everything has to be cohesive. It has to be that look. Like we know if I say McDonald's, you know exactly what I'm thinking about. There's that like the red for where McDonald's is and then it has the golden arches like the French fries. I know like for Coach, it's that serif font and sometimes you have the graphic, the graphic logo of like a stage coach, sometimes you don't. Um, So thinking of some of your favorite brands, there's like that cohesive element, not only with your fonts and with your colors, but also with the images that appear on there. So if you are a lot of sun and fun, and then you post something that's like zip lining through Africa or something that is totally not in alignment, like ski trips, people are going to be like, hold on, I thought Rita sold this stuff, but now she's promoting this stuff, so what gives? And that does not, it, it just doesn't help you or your brand out. So um, on social media, you should not have a hodgepodge brand. If you don't know what your brand colors or your brand fonts are, make them up. Go ahead, try out Canva, um, try out different color resources to have a fixed suite. So You can have two or three brand colors, but if you really want to be able to 
have options. I do recommend like having five to six different brand colors and they don't have to be all different, but they do have to work with each other. Similarly, you should have like two to three different fonts as your brand fonts. And those will be the elements that will always be present, not just on your social media, but also like on your website, on any promotional material that you create as well. So um, we don't do prices on social media. We don't do supplier forward promo. We don't do perfection, but we also don't do a hodgepodge brand on social media. The last kind of thing that I also want to put or add into here um, would be we don't do sales only type posts. So we're not only asking for sales on social media. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying before is that People don't go to social media to be like, what can I buy today? (laughs) Like if they wanted to do that, they can go on some of their favorite retailers, Target.com, BestBuy.com, whatever it might be, Tiffany.com. People are there to connect with other people and see what's going on in their worlds. So you also have to have those types of connection posts on your social media. It can't always be buy this African safari for me, buy this Grand Prix vacation package, buy this Olympics vacation package, uh, sail to the Galapagos, go to Antarctica. You can't just that like people aren't. When you are afraid of being salesy in real life, but you're salesy on social media, this is exactly what people don't want. People are not going to be attracted to be like, oh my gosh, they're selling me another trip again. (laughs) It sounds so funny when I say it out loud, everyone. Um, But like you have to think of your audience and you also have to think of yourself. Like, would you want to be seen and would you want to keep following somebody who was just asking for the sale. I don't think so. So be of value. What kind of tips can you use to educate people about the types of travel that you sell? What kind of tips might be helpful that people should be mindful of when they're on the journey with you? So make it very well-rounded and then sprinkle a little bit of salesy posts here and there. So that is my take on what not to post on social media. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, Feel free to go ahead and post any comments, concerns, and if we want to add on to this list in the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Facebook group. Uh, That is it for me. Remember to sign up for the Plan Your Year session and I will see you next week. All right. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining me on the podcast today. Remember to check out the show notes for all relevant links and resources from today's show. See you next time.